Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin this video by asking you guys a very simple question. And I expect a short, precise answer. Why do you think William Ruto shortchanged Josphat Nanok? I'm saying so because on the day William Ruto named his cabinet, he considered so many factors. William Ruto considered regional balance. He considered loyalty. William Ruto considered 2027 politics. And if you look at all those factors, they favored Josphat Nanok. But Josphat Nanok was missing from the original list which William Ruto named. And majority of Kenyans expected Nanok to be considered in the next appointment. And the next appointment was expected to be that of uh, the chief administrative secretary, which is Cass. But of course, Cass is now was declared illegal. And William Ruto ended up naming uh, Josephat Nanok as deputy chief of staff in his office. In my view, that's a clear demotion. Because when William Ruto made that particular announcement, the announcement which he made on 27th day of September, of the cabinet secretaries, several other names were missing. You could understand why they were missing. Joseph Mudama's name was missing. Of course, there was no way William Ruto would have named Joseph Mudama as a cabinet secretary at the same time Alfred Mutua as a cabinet secretary. The name of Hassan Omar was missing, probably because William Ruto wanted Aisha Jumwa to, to bridge the gender gap. And of course, Najib Balala was from Mombasa previously. So this time around, maybe he wanted someone from Kilifi. Malala was also missing. You could also understand that probably because he lost the election and maybe because of other factors and that of Obado was also missing. And for example, Obado was missing because if you look at Obado and his interest and you look at Elido Walo who actually campaigned for uh, Ruto, you could understand. But nobody understood why William Ruto, in his own wisdom, decided to lock out Josephat Nanok from the cabinet. Of course, even if he had locked him out of cabinet, I don't understand why he was made deputy chief of staff. Josephat Nanok was the coordinator, UDA coordinator for Rift Valley. Josephat Nanok was the director general, Kenya Kwanzaa. Josephat Nanok was the deputy chief agent. You saw him walking all over <laughs> in Bomas. But again, William Ruto saw it fit not to consider him either as chief of staff or to consider him as a cabinet secretary. And of course now he's also going to miss out as chief administrative secretary. So in this video I want us to look at why William Ruto locked out Josphat Nanok. Why he has actually should change him. Before we do that, for those who are watching the channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And I want to make this request to you guys. Please, in case you've watched this video up to this stage, please just spare a second. Press that thumbs up now. And for those who can, please, you can also just drop your comment so that we can also learn why you think either William Ruto has not should change him or he has. Now, let us get back to the main issue. Why do you think William Ruto should change Joseph Nanok. Because as far as I'm concerned, I was told that William Ruto was keen on ensuring that Rift Valley votes fully for uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. And that's why he decided to have Nanok as uh, the coordinator for Rift Valley. 
But why do you think he has finally decided to leave him out? Number one, I think it has to do with UDA performance in Turkana. Joseph Tanok is a former governor for Turkana. In the two elections, he defeated Jubilee and URP candidates. And when he defected to Kenya Kwanza, William Ruto expected him to deliver. As a matter of fact, William Ruto wanted to win all the counties in, Turka, in, in uh, Rift Valley. But when the results were out, Rel Odinga garnered 96,000 votes in Turkana. 96,000. William Ruto garnered 46,000 votes in Turkana. A difference of 50,000. ODM ended up winning the governor for Turkana. I think the senator went to Kenya Kwanza. And that's why William Ruto is not happy with Joseph Nanok. In fact, it can also explain why Obado was also left out. Other than loyalty, Obado did not deliver to Ruto the way he had promised. So if you look at Obado and Walo, then you definitely go with Walo, who never promised heaven. So I think Ruto decided the moment Torkana voted for uh, Railo Diga, he decided that was going to be the end of uh, Nanok. He was not going to reward him further. So that's the first reason. Number two is loyalty. If you look at the appointments which William Ruto made, almost 90% of them are based on loyalty. Keep Chumba Mukomen loyal to the core. William Ruto had to go and pick Mythical Inturi because of loyalty. He had to go and appoint Eden Duale as the cabinet secretary for, for uh, defense because of loyalty. Nanok lacks loyalty. What do I mean? William Ruto has been with Railo Dinga. And he understands how Railo Dinga stood with Nanok. When Nanok first contested as a member of parliament for Turkana South, that was in 2007, Ray Odinga funded his campaign. He didn't have much. He won. In 2013, Nanok was lucky to be amongst the members of parliament because after he was elected as a member of parliament, Ray Odinga actually ended up nominating him as a cabinet secretary, I mean, as a deputy, as assistant minister that time. Remember during the Nusimukate. After that, Ray Odinga pleaded with him I can name for you the people Rela Odinga wanted to be governors. Rela wanted Anyang Nyongo to be governor in 2013 because after the promulgation of the constitution in 2010, the position of governors was created. And most, of, most people did not really understand the powers of the governors. In fact, Nyongo was recommended for Kisumu. He refused because he wanted to be the senator. James Orengo was proposed. Rela Odinga told him, Go for, because they were in cabinet. Rel Odinga told him, go and run. He refused. He wanted to be the senator. Utino Kajuan, the same. Rel Odinga talked to Joho, who was also assistant minister. He accepted. He went and talked to Amazon Kingi, who accepted. Nanok also accepted to be the governor. That's how Joseph Nanok ended up being the governor in Turkana. And as a matter of fact, on so many occasions, Kenya Kwanza government tried to sabotage him. But he stood his ground on most occasions. So William Ruto is looking at that kind of a person and what Raila Odinga did to him. And then he's not seeing how that person can be loyal. Because if he cannot be loyal to Raila Odinga, a man who made him who he is, how sure is William Ruto that he's not going to be loyal? Raila Odinga even made him vice chair person of ODM party, the biggest political party. So William Ruto looked at loyalty. And considering the politics of this country, he believes that 
Nanok might not be that loyal. Number three is the 2027 politics. Now, William Ruto is going to be on the ballot again to defend his seat in 2027. The first thing you must look at is these appointments, whether they will add value to his 2022, I mean 2027 politics. If you look at the results for Turkana, where Raila got 96,000, Ruto got 46,000, clearly those who voted for Ruto would have still voted for him minus Nanok. That's the reality. So there's no value which Nanok will add to him. But if you look, for example, someone like Amazon Kingi, someone like Alfred Motoa, someone like Mithika Linturi, he, those guys will be able to help him in 2027 election. So that's why Nanok has been left out. 2027 politics. Because William Ruto is a political schemer. He's figured out that Nanok is no longer going to be the governor. If you give him a minister, he might be powerful, so you lock him out. The region still, you never know. He can still get the same number of votes without Nanok. So Nanok is not going to add much value to William. In fact, Nanok was adding value to William Ruto just on the account that he had defected from ODM party as a deputy party leader and as a governor for Turkana. If Nanok was not a governor for Turkana, I don't think William Ruto would have um, even seen any value in him. But now he's not going to be the governor. He's going to be some officer reporting to Felix Kosgei. <laughs> <laughs> so 2027 politics is what locked him out number four is reward system William Ruto is known to reward loyalist that's number one and William Ruto had so many people who were loyal to him even from Rift Valley there was no way William Ruto who is planning to elevate Kepchimba Murkomen as a successor and then appoint again just Fat Nanok. His reward system is that you stood with us in Kenya Kwanza, you stood with us in UDA. We are rewarding you. You didn't, you didn't start with us from the beginning. If you take Adi Ndwali, for example, his journey with Ruto began a long time ago. When he was in ODM, he left together with him. They came, they came up to this stage. So the reward system which Ruto is using didn't favor. That reward system didn't favor. Just Fat Nanok. So Ruto is basically, apart from those who came with their political parties like uh, Alfred Motoa, who came with his party, Weta, who came with his party, uh, uh, Nani, Amazon Kingi, who came with his party, Muslim Davadi, who came with his party. Nanok didn't come with his party. And in UDA, his ranking is low. So the rewarding system in UDA does not allow him to benefit in any way. And lastly, I think it's also about Rito Valley politics. I think William Ruto is keen on elevating Kipchumba Murkomen. Either Kipchumba Murkomen is going to be paired in 2032 with um, Shagwa, where he's going to be the deputy president or the running mate to Rigadigashagwa, or he's going to be paired with Ndindi Nyoro if William Ruto will elevate Ndindi Nyoro after falling out with Rigadigashagwa. So I think in Rift Valley, William Ruto is just keen on having Kipchumba Murkomen. And that's why if you look at even the docket which Kipchumba Murkomen has been given, it's a huge docket. Transport. And I'm going to, to share a link of my previous video about why I strongly believe William Ruto is grooming Kepchumba Murkomen. So there's no way William Ruto can groom Kepchumba Murkomen. And at the same time, elevate Nanok. Remember, Nanok comes from Turkana, where oil was discovered. In the last cabinet, John, John Munez was cabinet minister. So you'd have expected Munez leaving that docket, then Ruto again giving someone from Turkana because of their oil. 
And in fact, when Ruto made the, the announcement of the cabinet, there was serious disappointment from uh, from uh, down there, Turkana. I don't know what you think, but for me, those why, that's why he has been kicked out. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Guys, enjoy your viewing. Bye-bye.